Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to share five tips on reading and understanding the timeline that you might not know about. So this is our timeline in Premiere Pro, and I've just got a couple of random clips open in this sequence. But as our first tip, if you ever look at any clip, you'll notice that some of them have this little white cap triangle on the corners. And all this means is this is our full clip. Like if I drag a clip out onto the timeline, you'll see that it's, this is the in point and this is the out point of the full original clip. Now if I ever take my selection tool and drag any sort of cut in, or if I make a cut out of this clip with my cut tool and take that little selection, you'll notice that means I have more information that I can always pull out with my selection tool until I actually hit the original point and see that cap again. So just a little visual information that Premiere is giving you that you're really at the end or end point of a clip that can help when you're making transitions or just arranging. The next tip on how to read the timeline property is the track targeting. So you notice that every track has its name. So here's V1, V2, V3. That's video track one, two, and three. And then symmetrically on the opposite side, we have audio one, two, and three. And you'll notice if I click on them, they either highlight blue or not. And this is just a way for us to target what track we're working on. So for example, one use of this, let's say I have this clip and I copy it, or you can right click and copy the clip, and then I paste it. How does Premiere know where I want to paste it on which track? Well, if I have video track two highlighted and not one, and I press Command V, you'll see that the clip pastes on V2. If I have video track three highlighted and not two, you'll see that it pastes on V3. So this can come in handy because sometimes if there's already something on clip one, you don't want to target it and paste right over top and cut the clip, or sometimes you might. So it just depends, and that's one example, but if you ever just for some reason can't get stuff on the right track, that's because you might need to target that track and make sure Premiere knows where you're trying to go. The next tip I have is that if you ever look at a clip, you'll see this little effects bar, and by default, it's grayed out. Then if I ever actually add effects onto the clip, so if I go to the effects control panel, let's say I increase the scale a little bit, you'll notice that a yellow light automatically comes on there. So before, like in this clip, there's no effects, it's grayed out, but now, I can know just by looking at the clip that I have adjusted something about it because I might not have realized it just by looking in the preview window. But we can see there are effects on this clip. And if I add more than just some of the video effects in the effects control panel, like if I actually add some effects from the effects panel, such as, I don't know, let's say a twirl effect. Now you'll see that the clip turns another color, it turns green. Or if I don't touch anything in just the effects controls effects, and I simply add an effect right onto the clip, you notice it turns purple. So there's a couple different badge colors, but basically I know this green one, that means I've touched something about the scale or opacity, and I've added an effect. This one, it means I haven't touched anything about the scale or position, but I have added an effect such as twirl. And if I ever right click on any of these clips, and I go to remove attributes, it'll open up this little pop-up box and I can choose to remove each video attribute individually or not. So and press okay and you'll see that badge will turn off and go back to the gray. So just another tip on how to read your clips visually. Another tip on how to read your clips visually is you'll notice each clip has its own little color sometimes. So by default, we have this blue clip, but you'll notice if I ever drag a photograph in, that's more of this pinkish color. And you'll notice if I ever nest a bunch of clips together by right clicking and nesting them, now we have this green color. So this just helps us identify and label our different parts of our sequence. You can go to your Premiere Pro preferences and go to labels and you can see actually all of the different colors. So by default, we have iris blue, which is the default movie with audio and video. We have just violet for just a video um, lavender for stills, so all these different colors. And if you ever just wanted to color code a specific section, let's just say this part here with the cats I wanted to remember. So I highlighted them, right clicked, 
went to label and I labeled them yellow for some reason. I just wanted to remember this was the part with the yellow cat. I can do that as well. So just a, a custom way for you to label stuff. Lastly, you notice whenever we're working with clips, we either have nothing on the top bar, a yellow strip, or sometimes a green or red strip. This is the kind of like the buffering bar. It lets us know during playback if we're going to have issues or not. So since I have this twirl effect applied onto here, Premiere is telling us that things are not necessarily rendered. There's no preview rendered, so it might have to render it as it's playing, or there might be a bit of delay. If you're working on a powerful machine, you might still be able to chunk through it, but at a certain point, if you have too many color corrections or effects on and they're not rendered and you try to press play, you'll notice there might be some slowness or you might need to press I and O to create an in and out point and go to sequence, render effects into out or render into out or just press return on your keyboard. And what this will do is it will render that video preview for you so that you can smoothly play it back. And you notice that's why the bar is turned green now. So although it's a little bit more technical than that, you can kind of generally imagine that it's like a stoplight. Yellow is slow, green is go, and red might be a little stopped. It's more technical than that, but just an idea of how to read that. And lastly, just as a quick bonus tip, in the corner here, whenever you see the playhead position, you see it in the seconds, or if you right click, you can change it to seeing it in frames or whatever number you want. But if you're just playing it in the regular time code and you ever wanna to jump to a specific point, like I wanna make sure I go to two minutes exactly, I can always type two, zero, 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 press enter and my timeline will jump to two minutes exactly rather than having to find it. But those are five or so tips on how to read and understand the timeline. If you enjoyed this tutorial, definitely check out my channel for more video editing and Premiere tutorials. Let me know which ones you found helpful in the comments or if there's any cool ones that you know that I missed. And subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next video.